An intracavitary transducer with an OB exam type is used to perform a transvaginal examination of an intrauterine pregnancy in the first trimester. The patient is placed in stirrups or a modified frog leg position for the examination. The transducer is placed in a protective sheath containing gel to reduce air interference and then inserted into the vaginal canal. It is helpful for the patient to have an empty bladder to reduce uterine distortion and minimize discomfort for the examination. The uterus is a gray, echogenic structure superior and posterior to the bladder. The endometrial stripe will appear as a bright, echogenic line from the uterine fundus to the cervix. Posterior to the uterus is the rectouterine pouch, which should be evaluated for free fluid. The transducer should be swept from side to side to see the entire uterus. The transducer is then rotated to obtain a short axis view of the uterus. The orientation marker is directed toward the patient's right. The uterus can be seen as an echogenic circular structure directly posterior to the bladder. The endometrium will appear as a hyperechoic horizontal line. The transducer should be swept anteriorly to posteriorly to see the entire uterus. In a patient with suspected ectopic pregnancy, the presence of an intrauterine pregnancy makes the diagnosis unlikely. The earliest sign of pregnancy seen by ultrasound is the gestational sac. However, a decidual cyst or pseudogestational sac, which can be seen in ectopic pregnancy, may be confused for a gestational sac. Therefore, definitive sonographic evidence of an intrauterine pregnancy should only be established when a gestational sac containing a yolk sac is identified in two planes within the endometrium. A gestational sac can be seen within the uterine cavity by about five weeks gestational age using transvaginal ultrasound. The gestational sac appears as an anechoic, fluid-filled circular structure. The yolk sac can be seen by five and a half weeks and appears as a small, bright, hyperechoic ring within the gestational sac. A fetal pole or fetus can be seen attached to the yolk sac by six weeks, and fetal cardiac motion should be seen after six weeks. If no evidence of an intrauterine pregnancy can be seen, the adnexal structures can be evaluated for signs of an ectopic pregnancy. The ovaries appear as round or oval-shaped hypoechoic structures and are often located anterior to the iliac vessels. Follicles may appear as multiple hypoechoic cystic structures within the ovaries. Some follicles may be quite prominent, depending on the luteal stage. After ovulation, a ruptured follicle may develop into a corpus luteum cyst, which will appear as a large, anechoic, round structure within the ovary and may persist for up to three months. An ectopic pregnancy will appear as a complex echogenic structure and may contain identifiable embryotic structures, including a gestational sac or fetus. Doppler ultrasound may demonstrate a hypervascular ring of fire sign associated with an ectopic pregnancy. Documentation of fetal heart activity in an extrauterine location confirms the diagnosis of an ectopic pregnancy. The adnexal structures should be evaluated bilaterally for evidence of pathology. In patients with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, free fluid will appear as a hypoechoic collection posterior to the uterus.